Yeah, so it's very interesting. I chatted to a great agency that started up believing the whole marketing industry was approaching it from the wrong end, which is basically fear marketing. Mm. Um, instead of that, um, the term was, if you make your product so good and the service so good that it'll be when the customer discovers you, they're going, where have you been all my life? So that's more like a love affair than um, a divorce. So yes. it's, so one's more about attraction rather than one about rejection and fear. So, and I went, wow, that's really cool. So in other words, making your product just be so good that you are approaching it from a positive aspect. Um, and I mentioned uh, a book called uh, uh, Map of Consciousness, which is Dawkins, which is very much about mapping everything that motivates us as humans from above the line, which is courage and above to everything fear below that. So um, it's, really interesting to hear about your your marketing approach actually yeah and I'll, I'll give you an example of um one of the ways that we we took that theory and made it practice um a lot of security companies use red and yellow you know and their brand colors and we chose to use cooling colors blues and greens and and whites to be like this is an inviting solution this is not to be terrified with about because we are helping you solve the problem. Yep, cool. I really like that. It's just um, the approach is quite different to a traditional marketing, uh, which is quite often fear-based rather than attraction-based. Um, and I think to develop a product that when people just say, where have you been all my life? Um, and <clears throat> sounds like with your product in terms of speed, um, removing friction points and also increasing revenue is, is awesome. So as a founder, co-founder, what has been some of your biggest challenges? Yeah, I think um, it's always a challenge starting a new business. You know, I, I've failed more than I've succeeded. And, um, but I'm, and in a way I've, uh, the, the failures have led to the successes, of course. And I don't think, you know, I, I think that if you want to get into this practice of work, um, of, of founding organizations, then you need to be prepared to fail and, and also very um, humble and like lesson learned, like what did not go well. Uh, one example of, of those failures leading to successes is I built a lot of products over the years that I felt were very aspirational in the way that we sold it. It was like, um, mm. we would uh, build an, an education product, an education technology product, and our aspiration would be that students would learn better. But it's really hard to define a true value exchange in those aspirational sales, you know? Yep. But they can be very exciting to certain types of buyers. And so you can get an early signal, you know, to a small group of people, that they want to buy, but there's just you're just not really solving a big pain point at the end of the day. Yeah. And that's when I started StrikeGraph, I promised myself, I said, StrikeGraph is going to solve a problem that people have, that they know they have, and that they're willing to pay money to solve. For two reasons. One is, is that the business will do better because people will pay us money. But the second is that I find that's a more ethical business. Because the people that are paying StrikeGraph money, what, what we are trying to do is solve their problem directly. So we have a direct exchange. There's no one in the middle. You know, we, we want to solve it directly for that customer. Mm. And that allows us to build a product, to your point, that really meets their needs and, and like focus on that. Mm. And so I do think there were some philosophical decisions that we made. And as you said, like compliance is not the sexiest thing in the world. I had to swallow my pride a little bit, right? Like I have, I feel like I've built some really cool tech in the past. And I was like, you know what? People need to buy this and therefore there should be a business around it that can solve the problem. And I realize it's not the coolest thing in the world, but it will make it for a great company. And if we build a good culture, we can take care of our employees too. Yeah. Yeah.